All right. What are we doing? This is uh, Mr. Dell, and I am looking at this is CC2. Um, CC2, and it's section 3.2.3, and specifically number 359. Okay. So it says to copy and simplify each expression. So we've got four expressions to simplify. Uh, I'm going to go through each one. So I'm going to rewrite so we can see them better. A says 6 plus negative 18. If I'm taking 6 and I'm adding negative 18 to it, we have opposite signs, right? A positive and a negative number. When adding a positive and negative number, opposite signs, you subtract the numbers. So 18 minus 6, and we get 12. And then we look to see what do we have more of. We have more positives or more negatives. Well, there's six positives, 18 negatives, so there's more negatives. So my final answer would be negative 12. Okay, there's A and B. B is 12 and a half plus negative 25. Again, since I have a positive and I'm adding that to a negative number, with integers, when you're adding integers and you have opposite signs, subtract the numbers. So we need to look at what is 25 minus 12 and a half, right? So how do I do that subtraction? Well, a couple things we can look at. 12 and a half, I can actually convert that to a decimal if it's easier to you, for you to work with decimals, okay? Or I can look at it as getting a common denominator um, and put both of them in fraction form either way. So uh, I'm going to look at, at the fraction form first. So if we let's look at 25. My denominator here is, or let's, let's start with this one, 12 and a half. My denominator is 2. So if I'm going to make this mixed number into a fraction, right, we take 2 times the whole number plus the numerator. Denominator times whole number plus numerator is my new numerator. So 2 times 12 is 24 plus 1 is 25. So it's 25 over 2 is what 12 and a half is. And now I got to figure out, okay, what is 25, the number 25, as a fraction over 2? Well, that would be 50 over 2 is 25, correct? So now I can subtract those. The denominator stays the same. The numerators is what I subtract, and I get 25 over 2. Or written back as a whole number or as a mixed number, it would be 12 and a half. So that's uh, one way to do the subtraction, okay? Uh, and once I get the answer though, remember I gotta go back and say, okay, I had a positive and a negative. I have 12 and a half positives and 25 negatives. Well, there's more negatives. So my answer would be negative 12 and a half. So my answer is gonna be a negative answer to that subtraction problem. And just for the sake of making sure we're understanding uh, the process here too, if I went ahead and used the decimal form and I took 25 and now wrote it to be able to subtract as a decimal, remember I would take 25 and just put 25.0, align the decimals and subtract that way. Using the subtraction algorithm, I'm going to regroup here uh, and and then I've got 10 minus 5 there. So the decimal just continues to drop down. And now I have 4 minus 2. This, this gives me 2. And then the 20 minus the 10 gives me that 10. So I have 12.5 as a decimal response. And so I can have the answer as well as negative 12.5. Either one would be correct for B. All right. Let's look at C. C says negative nine plus negative nine. So in this case, I'm adding two negative integers, right? I'm adding two negatives. So I've got nine negatives and another nine negatives. So when you're adding the same sign, in this case, negatives plus negatives, I'm gonna add the numbers. I just basically have need to figure out what is nine plus nine, and that's 18. And remember, it's negatives and negatives, nine negatives, nine negatives. So really, it's it's a negative 18 is the answer because I'm adding nine negatives with another nine negatives. Okay. D, last one. 
D is negative 12.2 plus 6.1 plus 15.8, or better said, negative 12 and 2 tenths, 6 and 1 tenth, 15 and 8 tenths. Here, I have three values I'm adding. Um, uh, so when I'm doing that, you can use the associate property, and I'm going to associative property. I'm going to go ahead and add my positives because I have a negative and two positives. I'm going to add my positives first. So I'm going to add those first. And when you're adding decimal values, remember the algorithm or the method of adding is to line up your decimal place and then add using your addition algorithm. So eight, one, nine, the decimal drops straight down with in line. And then we've got uh, 11 carry the one. There's two. So 21.9 or 21 and nine tenths is the um, addition of the positive values. So now I have this negative 12.2 or negative 12 and two tenths to add to that. So what do we do? Now I've got a positive and a negative. So what, what really are we going to have? We have opposite signs. So I'm going to take those two numbers and I'm going to subtract their absolute values. So subtract their absolute values and um, line it up to where you have the largest absolute value, right? When you're using the subtraction algorithm. So nine minus two, seven. And again, the, the, the decimal place just follows in line. And then I'm subtracting 21 minus 12. And I get nine. So I have 9.7 in the subtraction. And I gotta need to I need to go back and just check. I have negative 12. So negative 12 and two tenths. So there's about approximately 12 negatives. Approximately 21, almost 22 positives. So there's more positive. So my final answer would be positive. And then it's gonna be that 9.7. So I don't need to have the positive sign. I'm just emphasizing that the answer is positive. Okay, there you go.